For today's talk, I'll be going over one of my ongoing projects in the Southern Rocky Mountains, looking at how pikas may interact with other talus dwelling species, primarily the bushtail wood rat and the yellow belly marmot. One widespread goal in ecology is to understand which biotic and abiotic factors constrain species distributions so that we can more accurately predict future range shifts under intensifying climate change. So as follows, the primary question I'll be covering today is, what are the relationships like among pikas, marmots, and wood rats across the Southern Rockies? Working hypotheses that we have are that pikes and marmots do not negatively impact one another, given that we oftentimes see them occupying the same sites. Next, we believe that marmots and wood rats likely do not interact with one another, and any interactions would be neutral. Uh, lastly, though, we do suspect that pikes are competitively excluding wood rats uh, from sites that would otherwise be suitable to the wood rats. These are going to be the higher elevation sites where pikes currently are, but wood rats are not yet. As you can see here, these three species have widely overlapping ranges across Western North America. Note here that Bushy-tailed wood rats have the broadest of the three species distributions and extend far into Canada past pikes and marmots, suggesting that they may be able to handle cold climates just fine in the absence of the other species. All three species are quite fascinating given that we can confidently identify where they are currently as well as in the past. For pikes and marmots, we can see them and hear them while we're out doing our surveys, whereas wood rats are nocturnal, so we never actually see them directly. However, all three species have unique scat from one another and indirect evidences that last for a long time. Uh, such as hay piles for pikas, active burrows for marmots, and active wooden nests and middens for wood rats telling us that they're there even though we may not see them. Now getting into some of the preliminary results from surveying in 2022. As seen here, sampling occurred in southwestern Colorado as well as a little bit of northern New Mexico and the La Salles of Utah. In total, I surveyed 157 sites in the region. This map shows the general layout of the sampling design as well. In brief, I surveyed 12 elevational gradients which typically spanned anywhere from 3 to 5,000 feet. Uh, green means that the site was occupied by pikas, orange means that they were once occupied uh, but no longer are, and red means that there was no recent evidences found, so that means no pico pellets, no urine stains, and no old hay piles. Note that there's one mountain range though in Colorado where no current or past evidence of pikas was found, um, however I did find marmots and wood rats there currently. Each of the elevational transects included 8 to 12 elevationally distributed talus patches which typically span from hot and dry down low up to colder and wetter up high. These photos exhibit just some of the diversity in climates that were surveyed. In general, pikas were typically found at the higher elevations, but not at the lower elevations. Similarly, marmots exhibited the same pattern nearly identically, but occupied fewer sites than pikas did overall. Lastly, wood rats were often found at the lower and mid-elevation sites, but not at the higher elevation ones, basically the opposite pattern of marmots and pikas. This figure displays all 12 transects that were surveyed, and the gray bars represent the total elevational span of the watershed that was surveyed, whereas the green represents the elevations that pikas currently occupy. When adding in marmots here, in the blue, we see that there's pretty heavy overlap between marmots and pikas across most of the regions. Uh, there was one transect that only had pikas and not marmots, uh, whereas there was another one that only had marmots and not pikas. However, we see that there's very little overlap between pikas and wood rats. There are a few watersheds where there's a tiny bit of overlap, however, for the most part, they seem to be elevationally partitioning themselves. Uh, the arrow points to the one mountain range where there's not currently pikas, however, in the absence of pikas, wood rats seem to occupy the highest elevations, suggesting that it may not be climate limiting wood rats, it may actually just be the presence of pikas. To dig in a bit further, we created a structural equation model. All arrows here indicate hypothesized relationships. The gray arrows mean that the relationships were insignificant, whereas the red means that they were significant and negative. The model actually fit well, and though it's counterintuitive, the p-value over 0.05 means it's a good fit. Overall, quite a bit of the variation was explained for each species in the model. While pikas and marmots respond negatively to higher temperatures in summer, pikas also appear to be negatively affected by summer rain, which we believe to be an artifact of the sampling, as I'll get into in a minute. Uh, lastly, pike is indeed negatively affected where wood rats can live, but so does winter snowfall, uh, but this possibly may just be correlated with where pikes currently occupy. Remember that there was one mountain range that didn't have pikes in it. Uh, this mountain range actually happened to be the wettest mountain range that we surveyed, and this likely forced the model to suggest that the overall relationship with summer precipitation was negative for pikes, when in reality, rain should have a positive effect given that it creates higher forage quality. So what does the future look like? Well, it might just be more wood rats. Uh, so why are wood rats appearing to win while pikes are losing? 
So wood rats are considered to be a cold adapted species just like pikas and marmots are. So for example, their bushy tail is for retaining heat in the wintertime. They're also about one to two times larger than pikas are, meaning that they should be a bit more sensitive to heat, um, and they should actually be more competitive than pikas are. However, wood rats are nocturnal and can therefore avoid the warmest temperatures midday. So that may explain partially why wood rats are able to occupy these hotter, drier sites that pikas no longer occupy. And with that, that's all I have. So thank you very much, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.